Here with Nate Collins. Stoppage in the sixth round, first six rounder as well. How did yeah. you find it? Uh, good. I felt like I was I was making my way into it a bit more as the rounds got on. I took my first round to kind of feel out what was going on. Got into my box in the second and third, fourth. And then when I thought I would tire, he tired. So um, I stepped up a level. Joe says to me, go through the gears. And we went through the gears and, and we got him out of there. Yeah. Um, sort of getting the punches together, that just getting the combos going and letting the hands go, that sort of was, as you sort of said, made it easy. Absolutely. Um, I felt that like I was hitting really clean throughout the bout. And um, my hands were really feeling it, so I knew that I was hitting him hard. And uh, he was acknowledging stuff and going like, come on, come ahead, this and that. And um, so I knew we were hurting him. So um, eventually we just put, started putting them together and, and got him out of there. So he's a tough boy, but... You're doing your best Billy Joe Saunders impersonation. <laughs> he done it to me first. He done it to me first. I, I went to hit my body shot and he done a big jump and he was like... I was like, ah, okay. And then he done a big arse wind and swing and I was like... So uh, I, had, I had fun in there. Yeah. That's what I'm here to do. I'm not here to, you know, take it... Yeah. No, we're here to have fun, so... Um, obviously your second fight, you had your, your debut last month. Yeah. Um, how did you find that as well? Uh, so my debut was good, but uh, I ended up fighting a boy, Lee Conley. Um, he's been in with the likes of Luke Campbell, Glenn Foot, um, and I, I outboxed him, and it was a lot of just focusing on my boxing and, and finding my way um, to begin with and slowing the feet down and you know get settling in the pro style. So he was a tough fight. He he was he weighed in a lot heavier than me, so um, which was fine because I had two opponents pull out, so he was the last minute. But that that was good. That was very good. Nobody's fought him on his de their debut yet. He's like an eight, nine, ten, ten fights in kind of fight. So. Um, I'd done the business against him and I was putting the angles together and you know, I'm a nightmare so I was a nightmare for him. <laughs> but very nice guy Lee. Yeah. Um, I suppose it's still the heavier guys, just making sure you don't get clipped Get clipped, well. absolutely. But uh, any of the boys in the gym will tell you and I, I've sparred a lot of good boys um, and I've sparred a lot of hard punches and I, I can take a punch, I can take a punch. So I'm not afraid to get hit. Take I'll a punch off Michael Conlon? I, don't, I, I did take a few punches <laughs> off Michael Conlon. Michael Conlon's great and that was a great experience. I was really, really happy for him to have me down there. So um, I think both of his learned for each other because I never went, I wasn't down there just to, with the attitude like I'm a sparring partner and I'm going to mess about. I was down there to try and impress him and make a wee, you know, Person. all right Michael, I'm mm -hmm. there, I'm making an impression. So, But he's a great guy as well, he looked right after me, so yeah. it was good down there. Do you, do you speak to him much at all? I, I spoke. I, I, I never knew him before it, and then he was saying, "Oh, when I got down there, he was texting me. I'll pick you up to the hotel, take you here, take you back, take you." So he, he looked after me. He's a, he is a gentleman. So, um, and the sparring was great. That's a great opportunity. You you cannot pass that up. The guys a high right. caliber. You don't get that every. You don't. Day you don't get that every week. I would be absolutely ecstatic if they got me back down because I think um, I was good sparring for him to get you know the southpaw. Right. He's fighting a southpaw and. I, I do it at South Park, I do it good, so. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff. Um, uh, I saw sort of before that you, on your Twitter, I think you said it'd been quite a hard few weeks for you, if you don't. Yeah. Uh, um, is that something you want to talk about? So, <laughs> trying not to cry here. Um, my, my granddad passed away last week. Um, he got diagnosed with terminal cancer, and then he went to the hospital with, um, you know, he was getting infections and stuff, and I went up to visit him. And I was like, oh, we're fighting next week, blah, blah, blah. Um, and he was like, listen to me, man. You know, I, I don't think he'll be able to make it to it. And the way he was speaking was if he wouldn't be out of the hospital in time to make it. And then the next day he passed away, you know. Uh, so that was really hard for me. And uh, I had his funeral and stuff, and I was the Paul Bearer. And it was just, I was really close to him. And in my, last, in my debut, he already had cancer. And he, I don't know how he'd done it, but he got along. And as soon as I won, I jumped out the ring, he was right over him, and I was like, that was for you, I love you, but it's not, and he, I've never seen the guy prouder in his life, so. Uh, but in there, that was emotional for me, I couldn't help myself, I was crying my eyes out there, because that was for him, so. Um, Sorry to hear that, and uh, yeah, I was really tough, I'm guessing, and um, was, was he sort of a... An influence with you with the boxing? Uh, getting... he, he was never a boxer himself, just a Glasgow guy, a fighter, <laughs> but... Um, he loved the boxing and his heart was just bursting with pride every time I boxed amateur or pro, like with my pro fight, he, he was over him and he went, that was I think his big highlight where he could see that and then that was him and he kind of, we had a big party and he went out with a bang so, it just, that was for him in there everything, 
I was just thinking about it before and I, I wasn't nervous and I was like, you know, I knew he was off me in there and that sounds cliched and cheesy but I, he really wanted to be there and um, unfortunately he couldn't but um, hopefully my next fight or in my, the next public show I will get t-shirts made up and I'll try and raise a bit of money for the Beatson and, and the cancer research because they've done a lot of good work with them and uh, hopefully we can raise a bit of money next yeah. time. Um, tough to sort of stay focused I guess with it everything that's going on. Mick Conlon or Jamie Conlon phoned Joe and he was like, we'll, we'll get you down on the Monday and we'll get you sorted. And my granddad passed away just the day before, so, or a couple of days before. So I was meant to be down Monday to Friday and get some good sparring and that was meant to be my focus and the last time, like, kind of thing. And then I couldn't go down. His funeral was on the Tuesday and I was like, obviously, I can't miss that. So it's hard to then... I went right for his funeral, home, packed a bag and went down the next day. And it was like game face back on, you, you know, you're sparring Mick Conlon here and you're fighting next week. And I was already meant to be fighting a guy with a winning record and then that gets switched to this guy. But I've seen him before and I knew he was tough and I knew, you know, he was good. So it's been hard to keep focus. So that's, I think that's why all my emotions came out when I won there because I've You've kept it in. So stop, I, yeah. I've, no, I've just kept it in and I've been like, this is, we need to just keep going, keep going. And, you know, it doesn't stop, life goes on, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, See, when I went there and everything came out, I was just, I couldn't stop crying. People were trying to take photos of me, I was like, please stop me. <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's what it is. Yeah. Um, I think probably people don't see this sort of side of it where, if you're like, obviously, the sacrifices people do have to make and you've got all this going on. Yeah. It's not the easiest they don't, of games. Nobody, mm -hmm. nobody knows what goes on in anybody's life, you know. I don't know what's going on in your life and this could be difficult, but... I think it's hard and you have to, it's an example is Ronnie Clark, you've seen him at, over the weekend with the big thing and he was trying to sell his belt, nobody knows what's going on in a boxer's life and nobody knows how hard it is or what they're making behind the scenes or how difficult it is to get, I mean I, I just had to give up my job there because I'd see in reality you can't work and box and you can't, there's so much going on in people's lives and if you're boxing you have to be fully committed to that, so it's kind of, you need, people need to recognise it's not just about going and fighting, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in the background so. Yeah. But stuff is <laughs> tough times don't yeah. cheesy stuff, but tough times don't last. Tough people yeah. do, so that's that. Um, as you said, it's relieved at the end, um, understandably. Um, I guess you can have a sort of a week or two off, maybe. Uh, I cannot in. wait to get a cheeseburger <laughs> down my neck. Honest to God, a big greasy. <laughs> I'm buzzing for it. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, when are you sort of looking to, to next get back out in the? Uh, I'm back out on the January show, uh, Robbie Burns night. So um, my teammate Reese is fighting tomorrow on the oh, MDK say, show, yeah. which I'm looking forward to. I'll get out there. I've got a wee ticket, and some of the boys for the club are going. So uh, Joe Ham was meant to be fighting on it. He's off it now. So oh. I think he might either get out on the 20th with Stuart Burt or he'll get in the new year. But we'll kind of see what the boys are doing, and then. It'll be good to get a wee Christmas night and relax and be the guys in the gym, you know. Aye, for sure. Looking forward to the sort of race making this. Oh day. my god, that guy's <laughs> mental. That guy's <laughs> mental. No, I mean, uh, we travelled the world last year and the year before, and we were really, really close. He's, yeah. he's one of my right close friends, so the guy's a magnificent boxer. He really is. So it's not just a treat for me to get to see him in action tomorrow, it's going to be a treat for Scotland. And, and if he gets on Box Nation, he, he's going to raise a lot of eyebrows. Um, with your sort of next fight, obviously you sort of stepped up to the six rounds. Um, yep. Looking for another one, I guess. Yeah. Sort of six rounds, sort of get used to that. Yeah, I think it's hard. It's difficult because people don't really know me. Um, I'm not about this big massive name, and you don't know me, and it's hard. But like nobody knows how really good I am, and apart from the people in the gym. So you know, see when I go away sparring, and these people then they get to know me a bit, and that, nobody's really seen how good I am, and even in there, that was 50% of how good I can be, because I've had such a hard time in the last few weeks, so, see when it gets to next year, I want to be stepping into titles, and that's, that's a bottom line, I don't even know who's about super featherweight, I don't really care, I'm, I'm there to fight everybody and anybody, I will not shy away from anybody, I really, really, I want to get moving as fast as I can, so, let's get it, I see what Ian Wilson's done with cash, and that's, that's what I want, you know, get into the position right away, um, and and that's what that can only come fast with the with the performance I'm putting on in there. You know what I mean? Because yeah. that guy's a durable guy, and I've went out and stopped him. So yeah, I was going to say what what sort of the, the goal for you, but obviously tight, something meaningful fights. Yeah, meaningful fights. I don't like fight. You know, no offense, because they guys are out there to make a living, and and everyone has to, you know, serve their time in the game. But there's people that go faster than others, and there's people who have got a mindset, and I I truly believe that I don't. I, I'm above this level, so um, 
we'll get another six rounder, see how it feels, and maybe an eight rounder, but whatever. You know, I'm saying this, I only listen to Joe and I listen to Ian and I listen to what their advice is, but they're well more than ready to push me on. I know they are, they've said to me, so we'll see what happens in the new year. Um, so I'll bring it up again, but did you ever think about sort of cancelling this fight just with everything nah, going on now? I'm no. not like that. I'm no. here to. This is my life and this is my career. Boxing comes first and everything else comes second. And uh, that sounds horrible or whatever, but, and I love my family to bits, but it, boxing always comes first. And that will obviously be in the back of my mind, but I want to be a world champion. And people go through stuff, and I think it's it's how you come out the back of that that makes you who you are and, yeah. you know, turns into the character that you're going to be. So, like I said, tough times don't last, mm. tough people do. So let's get, that's my mantra, I want to. I'm the toughest as I'm tough as they come, so let's go. I'm ready to fight anybody and I'm always ready to fight and I'll never ever cancel a fight. I could have had both my hands chopped off and I'd have fought my two stumps, you know what I mean? So. <laughs> Wild swings go with women. <laughs> I don't know. But I'll tell you something, that wee guy can punch man. I, I I I've got a hard chin and he can punch. I was like, ah, phew, I don't want to be taking too many rows. But um nah he's a good nice wee guy and that he was doing his wee bit of showboating and shit and he <laughs> earned his money Enjoy definitely. Him, yeah. So yeah. but um I was looking at his record, he's only been stopped two or three times and uh, uh, Daniel and Oliver Joyce and this, yeah. it's tough guys that have stopped him, you know what I mean, so. Yeah, well, Daniel Oliver Joyce somewhere nah. who's been, been nah. done that at quite a lot of stages and nah, exactly. fast tracks as well. Yeah, absolutely, so that's the kind of footsteps I like following. Yeah, um, a lot of people sort of have different reasons for boxing, what's, what's sort of your main motivation, why, why do you do it? <sighs> that's funny. I don't know, I was just... sitting here with a big one right that is, that's, that's deep, that's deep stuff. So, um, I don't know, I was just this wee fat guy that wanted to get fit. And then I got fit, I got the bug. And then... There's, there's, the only way I can explain this is everything I've done in life has always came second to boxing. The boxing's all I really know now. Um, in school, boxing came first, school work came second. I went to uni, I chucked it for boxing. I went to college, I chucked it for boxing. I've worked jobs, I've chucked it for boxing, and see now, with my last job that I chucked, it just, that stuff's so destroying to you when you wake up every day and you do something that you don't want to do, that breaks my heart, I honestly was like waking up every morning like this is destroying my soul a bit, I said all I want to do is be a boxer, so, I'm just, I have to give myself the best possible opportunity, and that's why I'm here, so, I think, my main motivation to boxing is because I want to be some and I want people to know my name and it's not really about the money or this alright the money's good and the money will come but I just want to be a known I want people to know Frank Baglione you know he hung up the gloves and he challenged for it was never a world but people said you've had a great career Frank everybody knows him I want to be that guy that when I retire everybody knows and like oh, well done you've done boxing proud and this and that so it's not really for I'm not here for like oh, big money and fame, I'm just here to be the guy that's gave people good shows, you know what I mean? Um, is there anything you'd like to add at all? Um, I've just chucked my job and I'm skint, so if anyone wants to sponsor me, <laughs> Nate Collins on Twitter or Nathaniel Collins on Instagram, hit me up with the money, come on, help a brother out. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff. Um, well, listen, congratulations on the win. And Thank you. I think it's fair to say you've you've enjoyed. Uh, you can enjoy some rest now, but uh, uh, I think you've earned it. <laughs> Good um, stuff. Merry Christmas, everyone! Thanks very much for interviewing me again. Good stuff. Thank you.